Welcome to the Baboom Baboom Podcast, your go-to source for expert tips on car stereo installation, vehicle wiring, and all things wiring related. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just getting started, we've got the advice to help you power up your ride. Get ready to crank up the volume on your knowledge and make your next wiring project a success. All right, everyone, welcome back. Today, we're going to dive deep into something that's super important for any trailer owner out there. Grounding. Yeah, grounding. It might not sound like the most exciting topic, but trust me. It's one of those things you don't think about until something goes wrong. Exactly. And we're talking about way more than just making sure your lights work right. Absolutely. We're talking about safety, preventing those electrical fires, and making sure everything runs smoothly. And to guide us through all the ins and outs of grounding, we've got... The Boom Baboom's Comprehensive Guide. By the way, love that name. Baboom Baboom. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? It does. It does. And their guide is packed with super useful information. Yeah. So by the end of this deep dive, you'll be able to spot those grounding issues before they turn into huge headaches. And hey, maybe even impress your friends with your electrical know-how. And more importantly, you'll understand how proper grounding directly impacts your trailer brakes. It's not something you want to mess around with. No kidding. You know, it's kind of mind-blowing that something as seemingly simple as grounding can affect the brakes. Well, think of it this way. It all boils down to the flow of electricity, right? For everything to work properly, you need a complete circuit. The ground wire, that's like the return path. Without it, the electricity might start looking for other ways to get back, and that's when things can get dangerous. So it's like the electricity is trying to find a shortcut, and that shortcut could be through something flammable. Exactly. It can lead to shorts, overheating, and in the worst case scenario, fires. Okay, now I'm really starting to see why this is so important. So how do we know if we have a grounding problem? What are the warning signs we should be looking out for? Well, one of the most common signs is flickering or dim lights. If those lights aren't shining bright and steady, it could be a sign that the electrical flow is being disrupted by a bad ground. So like the lights are trying to tell us something's wrong. Okay, what about other clues? Does a bad ground affect the brakes in a noticeable way? Definitely. Weak or unresponsive brakes can be a major red flag. It might feel like you're pressing the pedal but not getting the full stopping power. That's a safety hazard you need to address right away. It's pretty scary. The guide also mentions blown fuses and tripped breakers as potential signs of a grounding problem. Wait, blown fuses, isn't that like a bad thing? It can be, but in this case, it could actually be a good sign. It means your system's safety mechanisms are working. It's like a built-in circuit breaker that's preventing a more serious issue by cutting off the power when things get out of whack. So it's kind of like a safety valve that prevents things from getting too hot, literally. Okay, I'm starting to feel a bit more reassured knowing that those safety mechanisms are in place. Now, what about that clicking noise the guide mentions? What's that all about? That clicking sound, that's likely the relays struggling to engage because of that inconsistent power delivery caused by a bad ground. Relays, they're basically electrical switches that control different parts of your trailer's electrical system. So if I'm picturing this right, the electricity is like a frustrated traveler trying to find a shortcut, and those relays are like traffic lights that keep getting stuck on red. Exactly. Great analogy. And let's not forget about the visual clues. If you see corrosion around those grounding points, that's a pretty clear sign that something's not quite right. Like rust on a car battery, that's never a good sign. Uh -huh. Okay, so if we spot any of these signs, it's time to roll up our sleeves and check that grounding right. But before we dive into the how-to of it all, I'm curious, how difficult is it to fix a grounding issue ourselves? Are we talking DIY friendly, or do we need to call in a professional electrician? Well, the good news is you don't need to be a certified electrician to get this right. With a little bit of knowledge and a few basic tools, grounding your trailer wiring is actually surprisingly straightforward. Plus, doing it yourself, that can save you a trip to the mechanic and give you a much better understanding of your trailer's electrical system. All right, I'm all about empowering ourselves. So let's break this down step by step. First things first, where do we even find the main grounding point on a trailer? Usually you'll find it near the tongue of the trailer somewhere close to where that wiring harness connects to the towing vehicle. It's attached to the frame, usually with a bolt or a self-tapping screw. Got it. So we've located our grounding point. What's next? Do we just slap that ground wire on there and call it a day? Well, not quite. Cleanliness is key here. 
You want to make sure that metal surface is sparkling clean, free of any paint, rust, or dirt before you attach that ground wire. Even a tiny bit of that stuff can interfere with that electrical connection. So we've got to get down to that bare metal for a solid connection. Makes sense. Now what about the ground wire itself? How do we attach that? You'll need to strip the end of the wire and attach a ring terminal. It's basically a small metal loop that gives you a secure connection point. Then you secure that ring terminal to the clean grounding point using a boulder screw, make sure it's nice and tight. And I remember the guide emphasized using dielectric grease. Why is that so important? Dielectric grease, that's like a protective barrier against corrosion. It helps to prevent moisture and air from getting in and causing rust, which can weaken that connection over time. So it's like giving your grounding point a spa treatment, keeping it in tip top shape. Mm. Okay, so are we done at this point? Is that all there is to grounding? Well, we've grounded the main wiring harness, but keep in mind each individual light and accessory on your trailer, they need their own ground connection to the frame as well. Ah, so it's like creating a mini grounding network throughout the entire trailer. Yeah. Okay, how do we go about grounding those individual components? Is it basically the same process? Yeah, pretty much. You run a separate ground wire from each light or accessory to the frame, secure it with a ring terminal and a self-tapping screw, make sure it's attached to a clean metal surface, and of course, don't forget that dielectric grease. So it's like a repeat performance for each light, making sure everything has a solid path back to the ground. What about the towing vehicle itself? Does its grounding play a role in all of this? It absolutely does. You've got to connect that trailer's ground to the towing vehicle's ground to complete the circuit. So you want to double check that white ground wire in the trailer plug, make sure it's properly connected to the tow vehicle's frame or battery ground. Ah, so we're bridging the gap, making sure everything's on the same page, electrically speaking. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Now, how do we know for sure that we've got a good ground connection throughout the whole system? Is there a way to test it? There is a multimeter. That's the tool you'll need. It can test for continuity, which means checking if the electrical path is complete, no interruptions. So it's like a detective tool for our electrical system. Okay, so how do we use this multimeter? Well, we can dive into the specifics of using a multimeter in the next part of our deep dive. But basically, you'll use it to test between the grounding point and various components on your trailer, just to make sure everything is connected as it should be. All right. So we've covered the basics of what grounding is, why it's important, and how to do it right. But we've only just scratched the surface. Stay tuned for the next part where we'll get hands-on with that multimeter, explore some common grounding mistakes to avoid, and learn how to keep our trailer's electrical system happy and healthy for years to come. Mm. Welcome back, everybody. So we've laid the groundwork, talked about what grounding is and why it's so important. Now, let's get into some of those common mistakes that people make when they're grounding their trailers. Yeah, you know, it's easy to overlook some of these things, even for experienced trailer owners. So let's shed some light on those pitfalls, those grounding traps that we can avoid. What are some of those common blunders you see out there? One of the biggest ones, honestly, is not tightening those connections enough. You know, that ground wire, it's got to be rock solid to ensure that smooth flow of electricity. Yeah, it's like building a bridge, right? You yeah. need that strong connection or the whole thing could crumble. Exactly. And then another common mistake is not cleaning those metal surfaces properly before making the connection. Ah, yeah, we talked about that earlier, but I have a feeling it's worth repeating because it's so important. Oh, absolutely. Even a tiny speck of paint or rust or dirt, it can act like an invisible barrier blocking that electrical connection. It's like trying to send a signal through a wall. Got to have mm -hmm. that clear path. Need top quality electrical wire? Baboom Baboom's got you covered. Get your six pack today. Each combo comes in six different colors and a total of 600 feet of wire. Perfect for any project and you won't find a better price in the industry. Head over to baboombaboom.com now to snag yours. That's baboombaboom.com. So bare metal contact is key. Now, what about the location of the ground point? Are there any places where we absolutely should not ground our trailers? Great question. Yeah, one mistake I see sometimes is people grounding to a moving part of the trailer, like yeah. a bumper or a fender, anything that's going to be shaking and rattling around. And why is that such a bad idea? Wouldn't it still kind of work, even if it's a bit wobbly? Well, over time, all that vibration can loosen the connection or even cause the wire to break. It's like trying to build a house on a shaky foundation. Not going to last. Right. Makes sense. Solid stationary part of the frame. Got it. Yeah. Now, we've been talking a lot about the trailer itself, but 
What about mistakes on the towing vehicle side? Oh yeah, absolutely. The most common one I see there is not having a good solid ground connection between the trailer and the tow vehicle. Got to remember the vehicle is part of that complete electrical circuit too. Right, like making sure both ends of a rope bridge are anchored securely. Hmm. Okay, so we got to double check that white ground wire in the trailer plug and make sure it's connected to the tow vehicle's frame or battery ground. Got it. What about the size of the ground wire itself? Does that matter? Absolutely. Using a wire that's too thin, well, that can restrict the flow of electricity and lead to all sorts of problems. Think of it like trying to force a river through a tiny pipe. It's just not going to flow efficiently. So what's the rule of thumb for ground wire size? How do we know we're using the right gauge? Good question. For that main ground wire, the one that carries the most current, you generally want at least 10 gauge or 12 gauge wire. And you can always check that Baboom Baboom guide for specific recommendations based on your trailer setup. Perfect. We'll make sure to refer to the guide for those details. Okay, so let's say we've avoided all these grounding mistakes. Everything's hooked up properly. Nice and tight, clean connections. Mm. Are we good to go? Can we just forget about it and hit the road? Well, not so fast. Just like any part of your trailer, that grounding system needs regular maintenance to stay in tip-top shape. It's kind of like changing the oil in your car, you know? Right. Preventative maintenance keeps things running smoothly. Makes sense. Right. So what kind of maintenance are we talking about? What should we be checking on a regular basis? Well, you want to be proactive. Regularly inspect those grounding points. Just look for any signs of trouble. Rust, corrosion, loose connections, anything that looks suspicious. Even if we slathered everything in dielectric grease, I thought that was supposed to protect those connections. It does help, yeah, but it's not a foolproof solution. It's always a good idea to check those connections, especially if you've been driving in some rough conditions, you know, rain, snow, salty coastal air. So regular checkups for our trailer's electrical system. Got it. What about those ground wires themselves? Any maintenance tips for those? Yeah, make sure those wires are secured properly, not rubbing against anything sharp or getting pinched or anything like that. You don't want them to wear down over time. All right, so we're looking for any signs of wear and tear, any weak spots in the system. And while we're at it, should we also be checking those trailer plug connections, the ones that connect to the tow vehicle? Definitely. Those pins, they can get dirty or corroded, and that can interrupt that electrical flow. So how do we keep those pins nice and clean? special cleaning solution. You can use a contact cleaner specifically for electrical connections or even just a cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol works too. Easy enough. So it's all about maintaining those connections, keeping them clean and free of corrosion. Prevention is key. Absolutely. Much easier to spend a few minutes doing a quick check than to be dealing with a major electrical meltdown on the side of the road. Okay, so we've talked a lot about preventing grounding issues, but what if Despite our best efforts, we still run into problems. How do we troubleshoot those tricky situations? What are the steps we should take? That's a great question, and it's something we're going to dive into in the next part of our deep dive. We'll walk through that troubleshooting process step by step, learn how to use that multimeter we talked about, and explore some advanced techniques for diagnosing and fixing those grounding problems. It sounds like we're going to be leveling up our electrical detective skills. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Stick with us for the final part of our deep dive into trailer wiring grounding, coming up next. Okay, we're back for the final part of our grounding deep dive, and it's time to put on our detective hats and tackle troubleshooting. We've covered how to do it right, how to avoid those common mistakes, but what happens when those electrical gremlins still manage to sneak in and cause problems? Well, it happens, you know, even to the best of us. But don't worry, with all the knowledge we've gained so far, we're going to be able to track down those culprits and get everything working again. All right, I like the sound of that. So let's say we start noticing those telltale signs of a bad ground. Maybe the lights are doing that flickering thing or the brakes are feeling a bit sluggish. Where do we even start? What's our first move in this troubleshooting adventure? First things first, don't panic. Take a deep breath and just think back to everything we've talked about. Remember, we're looking for anything that's out of the ordinary, any little breaks in that electrical pathway. So even before we reach for any tools, we're going back to basics. Visual inspection, right? Exactly. Grab a flashlight and get up close and personal with all those grounding points. Look for anything loose, any corrosion, maybe even damage to the wires themselves. So we're playing electrical detective looking for clues. What should we be zeroing in on? You want to check if those ring terminals are nice and secure, make sure the wires aren't all frayed or broken, and of course, keep an eye out for any rust or corrosion. Okay, and what happens if we do find something that looks a bit iffy? 
like a loose connection or some corrosion starting to creep in, what do we do? Well, if it's loose, easy fix, just tighten it up. Make sure those connections are nice and snug. And if you find some corrosion, you're going to want to clean that off. A wire brush, some sandpaper, that'll do the trick. And remember our friend dielectric grease. Now's the time to put on a fresh coat and protect those connections from any future corrosion. So a little bit of TLC, keep everything clean, tight, and protected. Got it. Now, what about a damaged wire? Can we fix that ourselves, or is that when we call in the professionals? If it's damaged, best to just replace the whole wire. Usually, that's a pretty simple fix. You can do it yourself with some basic tools and a replacement wire. But, of course, if you're not comfortable working with electrical wiring, always best to get a qualified electrician to take a look. Safety first. Always a good idea. Mm. All right, so let's say we've checked all those visible connections, tightened, cleaned, everything seems to be in order, but we're still having issues. What's our next step? Time to bring out the multimeter. Remember that handy tool we talked about? This is where it really shines. Now we're going to test for continuity. All right, so we're checking to see if that electrical path is clear and complete. How do we use the multimeter to do that? Make sure your multimeter is set to the continuity setting. Then you're going to take one probe and put it on the main grounding point on your trailer. The other probe goes on a clean metal surface on the frame. Now, if that connection is good, you'll hear a beep or see a reading on the multimeter, meaning that circuit is complete. It's like sending a signal and waiting for a response. Yeah. Okay, but what if we don't hear that beep, no reading on the multimeter? What does that mean? That means there's a break somewhere in that ground connection. Could be a loose wire, a corroded connection, maybe even a damaged wire hiding somewhere. So back to our detective work. Got to carefully retrace our steps, examine every inch of that grounding path, and try to pinpoint where that break is. Exactly. And don't forget about the towing vehicle side, too. Remember, that white wire in the trailer plug needs a good connection to the vehicle's frame or battery ground. Right, right. Can't assume it's always the trailer's fault. Yeah. Got to make sure that bridge between the trailer and the vehicle is strong and solid. Now, what if, even after all this troubleshooting, we're still stumped? Is that when we wave the white flag and call in the experts? If you've tried everything and you're still scratching your head, yeah, it's definitely time to call in a qualified electrician. They have all the experience, specialized tools, and they'll be able to get to the bottom of those more complex electrical problems. Sometimes a fresh pair of eyes, you know. <laughs> and they probably have tools we've never even heard of. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today, and I feel like I could almost wire a trailer myself. You definitely could. And remember, understanding grounding, it gives you the power to take control of your trailer's electrical system. You can solve problems confidently, and that's a huge peace of mind. It really is. So to all our listeners out there, go forth and ground like pros. And if you have any questions, or maybe you've got some grounding stories, triumphs, or even those head-scratching moments, feel free to drop us a comment on the website. We love hearing from you. Until next time, happy and safe towing, everyone. Need top quality electrical wire? Baboom Baboom's got you covered. Get your six pack today. Each combo comes in six different colors and a total of 600 feet of wire. Perfect for any project and you won't find a better price in the industry. Head over to baboombaboom.com now to snag yours. That's baboombaboom.com.